It's always about sex. Hey, it's not always about sex. Look, I, I just thought it was about sex this time. Really excited for this episode because I get to sit back and relax. Yes, it's my turn to be the teacher. I love that we're doing this little role play every week. A little role play. Right next podcast. year, I'm going to dress like a slutty teacher. I, I'm going to dress like a slutty teacher. Um, we're back to the hair thing. Oh boy. Hey, so good earlier. What happened? We've gotten compliments on your hair these past couple episodes. Oh, and now it's giving you a complex. Okay. Okay. What are we, what are we talking? What do you we, want to get right what into What history it? are we doing today? <laughs> well, from the Stone Age to ancient Greece to the present, there's been one tool that nearly every civilization has kept handy. It's time to learn about the history of the dildo! <laughs> well, that's a vibrator. Same yeah, thing. well, Whatever. they got included after a while. They've had a vast history, these things. Basically, vibrators are dildos with a fancier outfit. <laughs> Is that what you say about squirrels? Squirrels are yeah. rats with a fit. Yeah. cuter outfit. So I love that we're doing this new segment because I didn't realize I was going to learn as much as I have been. Whether it's cock rings, sex in ancient Greece, which, well, by the way... Oh. Yeah, which Greece's room, I think. Yeah, anyway. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> hey, we promised to get tipsy. There's your proof. So yeah, they're the freakiest. Uh, and I got a whole section on them, but I've just learned so much about dildos. And you know, they're not like necessarily my people's go-to thing, but they can be. Really? You have one, don't you? Uh, yeah, but it's more of a, I don't know, like to me- Lo For a lonely, lonely night? Yeah, but no, I guess a dildo is something that goes in an orifice. Cause I was thinking mine's more like an ass dildo. Oh, you're checking your watch already. We no, sorry, I have an Apple watch. So when it vibrates, <laughs> it's kind of an automatic reaction. Oh, uh, it's like an ass dildo. So to me in my mind, when I hear the word dildo, I feel like, you know, it looks like a penis and it's for a vagina. That's my mind. Okay. But I'm wrong. I are just... you trying to say that penises are only meant for vaginas? No, but when we get into this, you'll see that the, the, the other two topics we've done so far had a whole gay subsext. <laughs> subtext? Subtext. Yeah. That's okay. I like the subsext. Subsext. It's on the brain. Uh, but these don't really. The gays didn't really take over the dildos the way that maybe you'd expect. All but right. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Archaeologists have been finding dildo shaped things since the Stone Age and for decades. Doctors and historians have tried to come up with non-sexual uses for these penis-shaped things. And I found this interesting because think about it. Back then, life was about survival. And they didn't think that people had time to just sit around coming up with sex toys. <laughs> they're like, they're too busy. They got a hunter. They got to gather. But uh, they realized that, uh, well, here's what it says. Scientific opinion is shifting towards the idea that these objects were actually used solely for sexual pleasure and nothing else. When you talk about um, objects that are shaped like dildos that you don't use as dildos, it really made me start thinking. Like, what do you mean? The only one I can really think of is a spaceship. <laughs> How big are you? No. That's a huge bitch. <laughs> no, but like the shape of like a phallic symbol, right. like most phallic objects are used for entering. Well, I guess you're entering space. Yeah, yeah. Hey, wow, that was a deep thought. I could see them maybe as hammers, screwdrivers. You'd use a dildo as a hammer? Well, I mean, the early ones I were made I use a of stiletto stone. as a hammer yeah, sometimes, so, so I guess. But anyway, no, because for hundreds of years, people were wondering what they could be used for. And finally, science realized, no, that was just for screwing yourself. So what do you think early dildos were made out of? Stone. That's correct. Um, there's two more shots. You've never fucked a stone before? <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I was just thinking, well, I, maybe I would because uh, the type of stone was called, uh, oh shit, here we Limestone? go. Limestone? No, no. Soapstone. Uh, siltstone. Siltstone, oh, okay. which maybe. The fact that I could come up with so many stones that could potentially be okay is. Well, because limestone's easy to break. That's what I was but thinking. Remember too. soapstone? Like, you know, when you were young and you do like a road trip and you go into one of those little, uh, like, touristy shops uh -huh. and they had like soapstone otters things made out of soapstone oh and they were really smooth okay so maybe we got soft because you could carve them right do you have your phone because no. do you have, does apple watch have internet 
<laughs> no, you can't. Okay, so what I'm it does, but I don't think I can browse. I wonder if silt stone is the correct name for soapstone. Right, maybe, maybe. Because the thing is, the reason they use silt stone is because it's very smooth and like shiny and silky, like those things you're talking about. I'm never gonna look at a rock the same way again. <laughs> but this siltstone, soapstone, whatever you want to call it, was not the material of choice. The first thing they ever made a dildo out of, chalk. I didn't know chalk was like something that's been around forever. Well, what chalk, is chalk? I know what chalk is. It's sea creatures. Chalk is like dead, calcified sea creatures. So over hundreds of years, sea creatures die and turn into this dust that's almost Sand? like a rock. But it's, but it's, it's like chalk. Yeah, I could be a little bit wrong, but there's some sea could be. Sea there's a 50-50 <laughs> yeah, chance. Yeah. There's a sea creature component to chalk. Yeah. Okay. But could you imagine using a chalk dill like that would be not so great, would it? As long as it didn't break. <laughs> now we know why Jenna liked to go clap out the uh <laughs> the erasers in class. I do remember loving like chalk, chalkboards. I love the and smell. The smell. I also remember watching, remember that show on TLC that was called My Strange Obsession? Yes. And one chick loved eating chalk. Oh, my, my strange addiction. Yeah. My strange addiction. What did I yeah. call it? Obsession. Obsession. Same Obsession. thing. But... Addiction. Yeah. Yes. And I remember she would eat chalk. And I just remember sitting there. And that's the thing about chalk is you can 100% picture what it would feel like to eat it. It'd be like a one of those cigarettes from Halloween. Or the Rockets. The rockets, yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Those cigarettes, you couldn't bite them. Popeye the cigarettes. The they Popeye. still have Do them. They still have them. They still have them, but they aren't called pop. They're called Popeye sticks now. Oh God. Ours were called Popeye cigarettes, and they even had like a little red thing to like imitate a flame. Yeah, at the remember end. that? We were bad kids, <laughs> married with children, fake cigarettes. No wonder we're messed up. <laughs> Okay. Ernie. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They uh, were also made out of antlers. Oh, oh, it's like borderline bestiality. Well, no, well, it's not like you're using it with the antler attached to the deer. I guess. Although I'm sure some caveman, some antlers did. are really <laughs> great. Uh, you can buy them in a lot of pet shops. Sorry, I got something wrong with my eyelashes. Is it an antler? <laughs> right. Um, but you can buy antlers in pet shops for dogs to chew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. and uh, so my parents' dog had one when I was staying home for that while, and I could see it. Hey, now that you know that hot tip, if you ever find a dildo too expensive, head over to PetSmart. They'll get you covered with an antler. Really? You could use anything <laughs> as a dildo as long as oh. it's shaped properly. Now, now listen, you, you're getting to my next paragraph. And doesn't splinter. You could use anything, she just said, that doesn't splinter. Are you sure you're not Greek, Jenna? Maybe. Because I don't look Greek. I wish no, I did. No. There's pretty people. <laughs> Those Greeks are freaky AF, as we learned last week. Right. <laughs> so here's the thing. So we had these antler, stone, and chalk dildos, but the Greeks saw that and were like, no, no, no. We're not going to do that. We want to make our own. You know what? What? I guess. I'm going to make is. you guess. What do you think the ancient Greeks used? <sighs> and it wasn't chalk, wasn't antler. It was <laughs> Oh. animal poop that they no. sculpted together let's sit in the sun sculpt together <laughs> sit in the sun i obviously put a lot of thought into this i could see that uh you're too advanced think of what is what is poo before it's poo food aha so they use carrots cucumbers no what do greeks do sorry this isn't a guessing game bread they used bread specifically baguettes yeast infection that's what i was thinking i well first of all you're not supposed to put anything food wise up your yuhua yeah that's what i i, I literally had that as a question i was like jenna isn't it bad to put there was just a food? bunch of greek women walking around with itchy vaginas oh and a baguette like again how big are you those are i mean can you make a little i guess a have little you ever taken stick? a baguette and squeezed it like this <laughs> You can make something fit if you really want to. And I guess they weren't these GMO processed baguettes of today. They were probably very small. Right. Right. Because they didn't rise. Uh, yeah. So they used freaking bread. Um, and then. I bet you their bread was rock hard too. Like a breadstick that sat outside, like sat on the table overnight. You know, when you, <laughs> you yeah, know, with a baguette, yeah. like a baguette exactly. will last, like you buy it the day of the next day you have to toast it the next day. It is rock hard rock hard take that you knock it against a table and it doesn't even break you can knock someone out seriously yourself out hey we do not recommend using a baguette on your no vagina. don't use food in your vagina is there no food like even whipped cream or no you're right no Nothing. because 
everything is pH balanced yeah. in there. So sugar will throw off a pH balance. Anything acidic will throw off a pH balance. So a flavored lube you could do if you oh, really yeah. have to eat something. Lubes that are meant to be used for what they're used for. Right. Okay. I would not chintz on lubed as a woman. Have you ever used uh, anything weird to, like as a dildo? I'm totally putting no. you on the spot. Because I, I had a friend, and I, no, I'm not saying her name. I wrote it down. Don't say her I'm name. I'm not saying her name. I, we're not friends anymore. But in high school, she would brag about using strange household objects. Like a toothbrush? No, uh, I have those written down too. Uh, carrots, she admitted to using one time. But the main one that freaked me out was the TV remote. And I think of her poor dad who goes to watch the game later that day. <laughs> like She would just like, I guess, use the TV remote. Now, you know if you've ever spill anything on your TV remote and it gets all in the keys oh, you're never and getting it. forever? Oh, 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 but like, come on. I don't think that she was like fucking herself with the TV remote. I think she probably I think just, she was just curious to see what could go like. up there. Oh, But that's like an awkward shape to go up a vagina I, I could see like rubbing the edge like like you know I know when you <laughs> see a vagina it looks like a slit like I know right it's not. but it's not an actual slit I know. so those are the outer she lips. really would have to have forced it up there or she could have like rubbed it on the clit I guess Probably. that's just weird she fucked her remote that's she fucked her remote and you know what she was something of a couch potato. you know what though everyone I at a young age experiments at some point somehow whether it's they're doing something and it all of a sudden feels weird for the first time it happens what did you used to have sex a marker a marker right yes yeah. while eating chocolate <laughs> uh, you think i'm joking i'm not joking uh yeah i i would <laughs> i'm not enough said enough said God. So, I just got the weirdest picture. Of I know, and you know what I looked like. Chubby Jesse yeah. <laughs> sitting on a marker while eating chocolate with a huge smile on his face. <laughs> I did. I did enjoy myself. Only I wasn't sitting. I was on my back, my legs in the air. <laughs> so then you could just rest the chocolate on your chest without even having to use your hands. It's a wonder I didn't choke to death. Oh God. Uh, I'm all in my head because I guess my mom saw one of these clips we post, and she's like. This is why you can't find a boyfriend. Look at the stuff you talk about. Who wants to date that? <laughs> Everybody has done something where they're like, yeah, especially when they're like discovering their hormones and sexualities. Yeah, mom, we don't all have four kids. Some of us get creative. It's called a condom, Donna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but thank you for not using one. Um, <laughs> that time yeah that yeah yeah i was saying so the greeks uh, also used dildos in other political contexts for instance there's a very famous play called <laughs> i left these complicated names on purpose because i knew we'd be half in the bag uh lysistrata listeria that's what it looks like <laughs> that's what I thought too. famous play by uh aristophanes is the Lys writer's name lysistrata lysistrata, lysistrata. So in this play, Greek women go on a long sex strike where they talk about using dildos to satisfy their urges while protesting. So they didn't end up. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Rewind. In the play. In the play. It's about. A sex strike that women go on because they got something to prove, I guess, or they want political changes. So they don't go want no short dick, men. Don't. No, no I'm just joking. Don't, don't, don't. I'm not making fun of your penis size. Do Greeks have small dicks? I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. That was just the only Dick March type of song I could think of in my head. Um, so they went on strike. Yeah. Because they didn't like sex. So they went on strike and had sex. With well, I don't know why they went on strike. I didn't get that deep. Into okay. The play. So if they want to look strike, it up again. The name is. Sorry, in the, okay. Yeah. In the play, they go on strike. They go on strike and they use dildos to satisfy themselves so that none of the girls would cave and like sneak off and bang the farm boy. You know what I mean? While they were marching? While they were protesting. It wasn't a march. It was a strike. So everybody's at their own house being like, yeah, oh, we're going to band I thought, together. I just thought of people on the picket line trying to use a dildo. While, well, this was a multi-day. Like, that is like, women are good multitaskers, but that? Oh, yeah. So no, at some point they had to go home and sleep and eat and stuff and, right. you know, take care of the kids. So while they were at home, they used dildos so that they wouldn't fuck their husband. So they'd be like, no, I'm, I'm good. I so just... that's how they withheld from sex. Using dildos. I don't think I need to get, I could withhold from sex for a long time without needing a dildo to satisfy my urges. Yeah, because, uh, right. Okay. I'm glad you said that because I, and again, I have very limited knowledge of this area for women, but I thought like your clit is ultimately the main sexual 
thing. So you could get off and be satisfied with just clit stimulation. Do you yeah. have to have something some up there? Some women can, some women can't. Oh, well, some women, me. Well, there's clitoral orgasms yes. and then I call them innies, internal orgasms where you hit the G spot. So can women, because I know guys have a similar, we call it the P spot. It's not the same. Can women That's have- horrible. Because your prostate, right? Prostate. The P spot? I know, it's not a good word. For Sounds it. like a place Listen. you pee around in the alley. <laughs> oh, take, gotta go. I'm going to go to the P spot quickly. I'll take P spot over bussy or, or mussy or whatever some of the gays call it. Like, like pussy, but with like a okay. Okay. gross, right? Well, Disgusting. Okay. So can a woman have a, any orgasm uh, that is totally separate from- clitoral orgasm like it's almost like you guys have two types of orgasm yeah or can they ever have any in and out wow I, and i'm just speaking for myself hey oh i was gonna say hey boys no nope, she's taken sorry mr chance you had five years i'm not married though <laughs> <laughs> offers are still on the table <laughs> me too me come too. to me with a dowry <laughs> So one interesting thing about the ancient Greeks is that women were were not allowed to penetrate men with dildos because penetrating was uh, and often still we is. We talked about that yes, last same episode. Same thing, right? Yeah. So, uh, but records show that it's very likely men use dildos in private on themselves uh, and as much on each other. Let's be honest; they just didn't talk about it. So isn't that funny? Like some things never change because even now some guys are like no 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 like you could be straight as an arrow well, I, th I feel like dildos for men now are like kind of similar to the butt plug yeah yeah right right and a lot of straight or i just think that we need to drop identifying people due to sexuality because i have learned and especially watching these shows now that come out with these like kids in it that people don't identify like i was watching one the other night and i can't remember what it's called it was great. And this guy was at university and his roommate, he sees him at a party and like his roommate's hooking up with a guy. And he says to the girl, like, I don't know. I didn't know he was gay. Why didn't he tell me? And she goes, maybe he's not gay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like maybe you just are fucking attracted to whoever the fuck you're attracted to. I hope that one day we just drop this like identifying terminology of straight, yeah. gay, bi, like let's just stop. You know, it's so funny the other day at the gym. I'm going to protest with it while banging myself with a dildo. <laughs> Made of bread. The other day at the gym. <laughs> there's this really, One of my gym boyfriends, okay. Uh, the other Your day. Your imaginary gym boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. But, I, you know, this is the problem with gym outfits these days. It's really hard to tell who's on which team. But this guy is really cute. And, like, the other day I kept noticing and looking at me. Like, you know, when you can tell and yeah, you're you can tell. No, 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 no. When someone's checking you out, when someone's looking at you, you can tell. And like, every time I look over at him, which was a lot, he was looking at me. But then, so one time I was on the tricep machine and he came over to the machine right next to me. And I was like, here we go. This is it. He's going to make a move. And he didn't. And he was on what his did you phone. think he was going to grab your dick no, right I thought there he in the just middle like of the say gym? hello or make a comment. It's like, oh, I hate masks or just open the floodgates because <laughs> boys, you have to do that with me. I'm never going to be the aggressor. And so anyway, so he's on the machine between sets and he's looking at his phone and I saw his home screen was like the most beautiful girl ever mm. in a bikini. So I'm like, that's his fucking girlfriend. So all this whole past hour of checking each other out. So I'm like, he's straight. So I moved on. But then what you just said crossed my mind, right? Everywhere and somewhere on a scale. And maybe he is there's, straight. We need to get rid of the scale. Yeah. There's no scale anymore. Just like people are just attracted to whomever they are attracted to. Did yeah. I use whomever right in that context? I think so. This is a bad episode to ask me English questions. You do it every week. Um, but like, then there's some people on the scale that are 100%. Like, I'm totally gay. You're totally straight. Am I? I don't know. I'm sure. But the, you know, it's a good point. I did play female soccer. Well, I'm trying to clear up rumors that have been swirling for years, okay? Right. <laughs> you just never know. It's a good point. And like, you never know. Maybe one day I'll meet a girl. Next episode, we're getting married. If you meet a girl, <laughs> I will be so personally insulted. <laughs> I'd be like, what? Why her, not me? Why wouldn't you never even try to make a move? Do you know how many K-pop babies we could have had? You know, people have asked me that before. They're like, really? Like, never late night. I know how drunk Here's you the guys thing, get. Is now you need to start being like, well, she just touched the tip. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she just fingered me with a with a bread <laughs> dildo. <laughs> I, sh I I showed I showed her mine, and she showed me hers. Yeah, just the boobs. <laughs> We stayed six feet apart, though, because yeah, of COVID. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. We touched each other's nipples. 
it's so funny like I don't know but like does that happen like amongst is that why guys and straight guys and girls can't be friends because there's this automatic because like, I have a lot of really really close guy friends and never once have we ever hooked up or come close to it now to say that neither of us have ever thought not thought about what it would be like if yeah is to say like you know like I have a really good friend I'm best friends with him I have been since grade nine so that's a very long time and I think back and I never have been attracted to him but sometimes I've been like well why don't I just be with him we're best friends we get along so well yeah but I, I always go back to, I couldn't picture having sex with him. Like I even slept in the same bed as him. And there's just not that urge, not that feeling, not that, well, that's well, I know. wonder. And that's why it's important to identify the types of chemistry you have with people. Like we just talked about with Shannon, the matchmaker last right. episode, because you can have person chemistry, you can have sex chemistry. There's different right. types of chemistry. And honestly, if I have such a great connection with a guy that like, and I don't feel the sexualness part of it, but it's such a good connection that you want to spend all your time with them. Like, I value that friendship. Yeah. yeah. That's a brother I never had, yeah. you know? And I just, still, regardless of what other people say, and there's been a lot of times of with that in my life that I've had best guy friends where, you know, in high school, you always spend a lot of time with one friend more than the other, where I spent a lot of time with one guy and they'd be like, you guys are totally boning at one point. And I'm like, no, even oh. in university, all my friends were guys. And my boyfriend would be like, oh, you're definitely hooking up with them. And I'm like, no, oh. like, I, I, totally. I don't meet people with the intentions to hook up all the time. <laughs> Sometimes, but not all the time. I can't tell you how many uh, fires I had to put out on the radio and you and Johnny Novak would hang out. Oh, oh my God. We have matching tattoos. Right. He slept at my house so many times. Gore did too. And everyone's like, no, never, never. And I was like, no, no. <laughs> Gord is my child. Yeah. <laughs> Gord was so much younger at the time. Yeah. You know, and so it was like more of a here's a nice clean couch to sleep on yeah, and right. food to eat in the morning. <laughs> you know? And Johnny. And with was... Johnny, he lived out in like fucking Canada and Nepean. So it was just, I live downtown. Like it's just easier. Sleep on my couch, tall ass man. Yeah. So Gord was your child. Johnny was your brother. And I'm no. your weird aunt. <laughs> Is that, is that about right? Hilda? <laughs> Hilda. Hilda. My first email address. All right, we digress. Let's we get back. Totally let's get back to, this, there. Let's get back to the script. We're talking about dildos. Yeah, we're talking about dildos. And this time we're done with the Greeks. We're going to China. Uh, Chick of the I, <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like Donald Trump. Like China. <laughs> like I didn't, but, I'm beeping all yeah, yeah. of that. So, out. Like, okay. So meanwhile, on the other side of the world in China, the draw, <laughs> I'm sorry, we're getting a little drunk. So we're, here we are in China. Uh, there was something called the Western Han Dynasty, and they were very rich. Have you ever heard of them? I'm pretty sure all the dynasties are very wealthy. I guess if you're a dynasty. Right? So the, this Han Dynasty ruled from years 206 to 220. Isn't that crazy? 206 to 220. Those were legit years. But like, doesn't that also make you realize as like a Canadian and a white person in North America that like our yes. existence and our races are just so small on the civilization yeah. scale? It's it's so cool to think about that. Yeah. So yeah, here they are in 206 and they wanted sex toys, but not for why you might think. So they were like the Egyptians and that they believed after life, you had to have an elaborate tomb because walk like an Egyptian. Boom, 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 boom. You needed boom, a tomb? Boom. You needed a tomb if you're in the Han Dynasty. And uh, they believed that the spirits would live on forever inside the tomb. So like the Egyptians, they wanted these tombs to be fabulous, right? Riches, Hell snacks, because yeah. you're in there for eternity. Snacks. They had snacks. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> including uh, dildos because they wanted you to be satisfied after death. Really? Yeah. The, yeah. All the way back then, they yeah. mummified their emperors and royalty. Right. And when they buried them, they buried. You know what? I never thought to like bury a sex toy with a loved one. Yeah, right. Because we don't know. You talk about Canadian modern world. Maybe they were right. Maybe you do haunt your grave forever. And then you got no toys, nothing. For the last like a couple episodes we've done about history of the one thing I think is so clear as day is the sexual appetite of human beings. Yeah, well, like all the way from like, way back, it wasn't sex didn't become like something like 
it didn't seem like that dangerous or whatever until people started to suppress it. It was the Brits. The, and I have a section on that too. But it was suppressed, tried to even be suppressed back in ancient Rome. Yeah. Right? Right. Like, why do we try to suppress our desires? It's so funny. Yeah. It's like somebody in power was a, you know, pearl clutcher and they just made all these rules. Maybe Sorry, the wine's religion. coming up. <laughs> Maybe it was religion too. The pillar of stains ain't hitting like it used to. No, it's like heartburn. <laughs> Gotta start taking antacid. Uh, anyway, so these- Oh, Chinese I'm on a prescription. Oh. <laughs> So these Chinese uh, dildos were made of bronze, which at the time- Oh, that sounds luxurious. Yeah. Not luxurious. That sounds like top scale. Yeah. Um, so they would put them in the tombs for sexual gratification of the ghosts, but it wasn't just about sexual gratification. They were also tools. What do you mean by tools? To deck their way out? <laughs> no. So the Han believed that the perfect balance of yin and yang could, is it yin and yang or yin, yin and yang? I think it's <laughs> yin and yang. Yin and yang. I don't yang. know. Uh, basically the female and male energies could be achieved during sex. So the balance of these two male and female energies could be achieved during sex. And so if you incorporated one of these shiny bronze dildos to make the sex even more mind blowing, oh. you could have a spiritual experience. Did so, they say if it was specific, if they put the dildos in with men that were buried, emperors no, or say. empresses oh, or anyone? Well, I'm, now I'm talking about using it as like a couple. So if you use one of these bronze dildos at home with your spouse, you could have a spiritual But that's experience. why they buried it in the mummy case. True, yeah. So I'm like, right. was it just Got for it. like men or like- Oh, I don't know. Was don't it also know. for women? Very good question. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I know we should refrain from asking questions. No, no, because that's, it's, our listeners could be wondering the same thing. I just don't know because my research- Has anyone ever said your sweater looks like Mugatu? Yes, this is what you call it. You it called it. Drives me nuts. I hate this sweater. Can we burn it? It used to be. I've never worn it on this. Can new, we burn uh, it? No, we can. I love it. I Some people it. call it Mugatu. Others call it David Rose, which I prefer. David Rose. If you it would... was black and white, yeah, it would be David Rose. But okay, so, anyway, Mugatu is also black and white. I saw track again. I'm getting yeah, easy. Okay, so we're not done. Buckle up. Do you have to pee? Should we take no, a break? No, I don't have to pee. Okay, so here we go. I don't uh, mind smoking a joint right now. <laughs> We should do that one time on, on the podcast. Okay, moving forward. Here we are in 16th to 18th century Europe. Uh, this is when dildos became scandalous. So 16th to 18th century Europe, what was that, 1800s, 1900s? Yeah, because you know when they say like 18th century, you're always one ahead. Anyway, oh. so get this, nuns began to use dildos in the 1500s. I don't blame them. <laughs> they made a fucking... <laughs> They said they were never gonna have sex. They gotta have something. And I mean, that cross is an interesting shape. Listen, hey, don't they each have one hanging over their beds? I mean, I'm just saying. I don't know if that would be comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's very square. Yeah, maybe if, if you ever see a cross with like a rounded tip. Right. Well, that's just- It's a like a rigid IUD. <laughs> Ew. Well, this is what the nun said. Uh, it was to quote, quell the gnawing temptation of the flesh. <laughs> I'm sure that's still very common among nuns. So today. basically it was like, you're horny, but we don't want you to physically act it out. So we're going to give you a tool yeah. to quench your thirst. Exactly. That, that's it. It's kind of like when Christian girls say, I want to save myself until marriage. And then they take it up the ass. <laughs> exactly what it's like. But at the same time for the nuns, you're not doing it with anyone else. So it is perfectly legit. You're like, you're not sinning. You're just, you're, oh, but I believe masturbation is a sin. Well, masturbation, I think for men is just a sin because ejaculation is a potential child. Oh. Right. Women, Matt, we don't need to orgasm to have children as a lot of men out there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You should change that. So let's flip that. Right? Yeah, you have to make me come or else I'm not have get pregnant. Actually, yeah, that's a great thing to tell straight guys. They'll be there all night. <laughs> I hate what you do. <laughs> okay. Moving a century later, dildos began to be more readily available, but that did not mean they were condoned in polite society. Here we fucking go. So there is a guy named John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. He imported dildos into England for his sex club in the year 1670. So he was cool. He had a sex club, 1670. But as soon as the officials got word that he was importing dildos, they were destroyed immediately. And that sort of launched this time in history where everybody seems How to get really How could they burn nervous. them if they were made of rock and metal? I don't know if they were burned. I said destroyed. Oh, oh, so they were destroyed. I just figured like a, all I saw in my head was a massive dildo burning going on out in this Times Square. <laughs> like a tire fire. Right. 
Like burn your books, burn your dildos. Well, by 1670, I'm not sure what they were made of actually, but probably the same shit. Cause we didn't have plastic by then. We didn't have rubber. So it would have had Especially to be Especially not when it was uh, hypoallergenic. Right. So this, this is the time in history where what a shitty time to be alive when everything became illegal and not fun. Um, <laughs> But nevertheless, people ignored the stigma Fuck around the dildos. Laws, That's sorry. right. And they continued to try to get their hands on dildos. So English women began making their own dildos. Oh, wait. Out of wool and linen material, right? No, but oh. but go on because I'm curious what your thought process because is. Because back like in like uh, the Confederate times and stuff like that, women would take like, they didn't have pads. So they would take their dress oh. and like bunch it together. And if you if you've ever been a girl, you've accidentally gotten your period not accidentally it's not a fucking accident but didn't know but you've gotten yeah. a period like unexpectedly somewhere you could take like toilet paper and you oh and it gets really tight right and you and can firm. like put it in your panties or whatever or put it up you if you want ah. I don't suggest that but yeah because then when it comes out it's all ripping right so that's why I was like wondering back that time is that what they did because uh like even like King Henry and like Tudor days, the women, when they had their period, they had like an extra skirt they wore under their dress and they would take that one and pull it in between their legs uh, right. and walk around with. Oh my God. You just made me think of something disgusting. So this is total sidebar, but this I don't care. Me. No, there's a great Netflix special. I don't now. masturbate at the gym. No, no, never, <laughs> never masturbate. I can't believe how many people ask me what is, what came next? Well, listen to the podcast. You'll find out. He doesn't know because he didn't masturbate at the gym. Yeah, Nothing I came didn't. next. So many gays were like, I don't believe you. We and I was that. like, is what? No, something came, nothing oh, came next. Nothing. Yeah. No. Story of my life. Uh, what was I going with this? My sidebar. Yes. Great Netflix special. Nikki Glazer, one of my new favorite comedians. You probably hate her because all she does is talk about sucking dick and being a slut. And that's what you hated about Amy Schumer. But anyway, she talks about, and I'm so curious if you've ever done this. After a one night stand with a guy, sometimes like when you roll over to go to sleep, your vagina is all like gross sticky and, and like sticky so she'll take the sheet and stick it up there but then she'll fall asleep and so in the morning the joke is it's like a tent because it's all crispy <laughs> and so she's getting out of the bed to leave but there's this little crispy vagina tent <laughs> and so your little period skirt thing made me think of that have you ever done that um no because i am a grown-ass woman <laughs> and i do the responsible thing and i get up and go to the washroom and pee yeah right and right after all sex out. and not only that but then i take whatever cloth if there if you can't find like clean i'll take your towel and i'll wet it and wipe, wipe it hell yeah oh. it's mostly you anyways as yeah, the yeah. man. it's mostly the sticky is not from you as a woman yeah. the sticky is dry jizz yeah and if you think that's gross guys sorry <laughs> your face was down there anyway so have it on your towel a little memory uh, anyway no so where was i they, what they used to make their own uh wood so household items with varnished wood chair legs wooden spoons imagine splinters, splinters. <laughs> right but it is varnished so it has a smooth surface but still i know <sighs> so but so see, see, but this is a lesson why they shouldn't outlaw shit and why all drugs should be legal because people find a way whether it's drugs dildos butt plugs people find a way where i also think by making these sort of things illegal and taboo you're yes. encouraging people to find unsafe ways of achieving that that's right and that's the horrible part about it is by banning sex toys you're going to have people turn around and find other sex toys. I don't know if I said this on the last podcast, but after our history of the cock ring, I had a nurse reach out to me and be like, oh my God, this guy came into our ER with a homemade cock ring on. <gasps> he was too embarrassed to come in. So by the time he got here, his dick was blue. Oh, Ouch. right. But then that's what it, because there's a, not even just that, like, there's a sense of taboo. Like it's yeah. not okay. It's, it's not normal to masturbate and experiment when in reality, we just told stories about us doing it since we were fucking kids. Yeah. It is natural. It's human instinct. Yeah. See, we're educational. I don't know. I'm getting so worked up. No, but it's important. <sighs> I feel like that it's important. We need a Sunday night sex show. That was strangely arousing. <laughs> 